Today, we're gonna to be looking at time current curves. I'm a software developer, and I added these to my electrical software for AutoCAD and Revit starting in 2018. So I've been looking at these for about six years. I wanna share with you as an electrical engineer what I've discovered by just looking at all of these different curves and actually having to get them implemented in our software. I wanna share the lessons that I think would be helpful for an electrical engineer to know from the people who are actually designing the software that gives all these curves to you. For this video, I'm gonna assume that you are familiar with time current curves. If you have questions on what they actually are, there's a lot of other videos out there on the internet that talk about the very basics of time current curves. To quickly review, the vertical axis is time and the horizontal axis is current. And you have this curve for a breaker or a fuse that shows you for a given current, what time it is going to trip. There are three basic shapes of curves that we'll talk about. There are thermal curves, there are electronic curves and there are fuses. The thermal curves are for thermal magnetic breakers. They've got three parts to them. So over here on the left hand side, you have the rating of the breaker itself. And you don't want it to trip immediately when the current hits the rating of the breaker. So that's usually a fairly long uh, trip time. Then you have the instantaneous trip. This is the current at which that breaker is going to close immediately. So you have that vertical piece over here on the right hand side. And then in between those, you have the sloping section where as the current moves from the breaker rating to the instantaneous, it's gonna close faster. Past the instantaneous trip, you have going off here to the right, the instantaneous delay. That's how long it actually takes to trip in the instantaneous scenario because it's not actually instant. There is a very tiny delay. These thermal curves come in really two different varieties. One, this instantaneous trip is fixed where you don't actually have any settings on the breaker. It just has one curve and that's what you get for the breaker. There are some of these thermal magnetic breakers that have a setting for that instantaneous trip. So you can move this section back and forth, kind of left and right, depending on the setting of that breaker. The second type of curve are these electronic curves. And these are a series of straight lines and where these lines are set are based upon the settings in the breaker itself. Depending on the type of breaker, either these are little knobs that you're turning or they might have digital settings where you're spe setting a specific value on a digital readout. The first vertical line is the long time pickup. This is gonna to correspond to the rating of the breaker. Typically there is the, the rating of that breaker, but you can actually dial that down if you want to, if you wanna use a 400 amp breaker for a 300 or a 200 amp application. Then you have the long time delay. That's the first sloped section here. And depending on the breaker, you will have options to move this sloped value up and down on the curve. Then you have the short time pickup. This is the next vertical line. You can move this left and right based upon the settings of the breaker. And then you have a short time delay, which is a horizontal line that's after that short time pickup. You can usually move this up and down on the curve. Depending on the type of breaker, you also can have an I squared T curve, which goes in between that short time pickup and short time delay. It's a sloped line between those two. For all of the electronic curves, this I squared T curve is probably the one that varies the most in terms of how it's implemented. Sometimes it's just an on and off. Sometimes it varies based upon that short time delay value. There's really no standard for how manufacturers have implemented that part of the curve you need to be aware for the breaker that you've chosen, how that curve actually works. The final setting you have is the instantaneous pickup. This is where the breaker will trip immediately. After that, you have the instantaneous delay, which is how quickly instantaneous actually is. That instantaneous delay is part of the curve, but there's never a setting for that on the breaker. It's always that instantaneous pickup is the last setting that you have. Different electronic curves have varying numbers of these settings available that you can change. When you're looking at these in your software, they might not have all of these settings available. So the software is going to implement the settings that that breaker has. If you're going to be specifying values for an electronic breaker, it's probably a good idea to pull up the manufacturer's cut sheet, take a look at what that electronic trip unit actually looks like so that you understand how they're going to be setting these values. So you can make sure that what you are specifying can actually be set in the field. Then the last type of curve are fuse curves. And fuse curves, rather than having a minimum and a max value, are usually just a straight line. It's interesting that the fuse curves that manufacturers publish usually top out at 1,000 seconds, which is about 15 minutes. Uh, all of the breaker curves usually go up to 10,000 seconds, so that's about two and a half hours. So when you're just looking at these curves and putting them on the same graph, 
the fuse curves uh, just get cut off sooner than the uh, breaker curves. Also, not all of the curves for all of the fuses that exist are published. Sometimes the manufacturer will publish a few of the curves, and then the official way to handle the other curves is to interpolate between the curves that are provided. So if they give you a 50 amp curve and a 100 amp curve, if you have a 60 amp fuse, you put a, a curve in between those two and you figure out what that curve is going to look like. That's not something that you really want to have to do by hand. When you have software where these curves are digitized, uh, it's a little bit easier for the software to figure out what's going to be uh, for a 60 amp fuse between that 50 and that 100 amp fuse that's provided by the manufacturer. That's the three types of time cur curves that you will encounter. Let's take a look at some of the practical considerations when you're actually using these curves. First, realize that these curves are being pulled from analog sources. You don't have digital information for these curves. The manufacturers publish PDFs that have these curves, and that's really the only way you can get this information. So software developers like myself, what we'd have to do is we have to take that PDF and then digitize it so that it can be used in our software. We are having to manually trace these curves that are provided to us. You should keep that fact that these are being pulled from analog sources in uh, the back of your mind as you're actually trying to use them for coordination, particularly for the thermal curves and the fuse curves where those are being traced manually. You don't want to have incredibly tight coordination on those. That's going to be relying on the precision of the, uh, the tracing of the curves that you probably actually can't rely on. The electronic curves are going to be more precise because those often have very specific values that they are being uh, set at for each of the settings. The manufacturers do publish that, hey, this setting corresponds to this specific value. So you can draw those curves with more specificity. When you're choosing the curves for your selective coordination, you need to make sure that you're choosing the piece of equipment that's actually being installed or that already exists in the field. You can't substitute. The curves are different because the equipment is different. They are going to react differently, even if they're rated for the same values. This can make existing installations a little tricky to coordinate because you have these legacy curves that often are for manufacturers that don't exist anymore. So there've been a number of times where customers have come to me and said, hey, I have this breaker, it's, it's installed, can you get this curve? And we've had to chase it down between multiple acquisitions of companies to finally find the current holding company for that old manufacturer from the 60s. And in some of those cases, we are able to find those curves. And so then you'll get sent this curve again from the 60s. It's this photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. It's kind of blurry. It's tilted on the page. So we do our best to trace that curve, but that's one of those cases where you're going to need to be a little bit careful about being very precise with that curve because it's just over the course of time, we've lost the precision for what that curve actually looks like. And then there's other cases where the trail of a manufacturer just grows cold that it's bought out by one company, that company moves it to a different state, and it's not really clear what happens to it after that point. And so there's no one to even contact about the curve. In those cases, you as the engineer need to decide what you want to do. You could take a look at a couple curves of similar breakers or fuses and see if they're similar enough that you can assume a curve for it. Or if you need to be certain of that coordination, you might need to replace that fuse or breaker with something where you have a curve that is known. So since you can't substitute, it is important to know what breaker you're using. This becomes even more important on the electronic breakers because they're all implemented a little bit differently. There's no standard in the industry for how those trip units work. So every manufacturer has a different way of doing it. Even within a manufacturer, they have just different trip units and they all work a little bit differently. That's where you want to track down the cut sheets from the manufacturers, take a look at the settings that they have and back check them against the settings and the software that you're using. That said, a lot of the curves are actually duplicates. You'll have a, a breaker and it's going to have a lot of different uh, settings that aren't going to impact the trip. The manufacturer will publish a single trip curve and it's going to correspond to 10 different types of breakers. In our software, we list each of those types separately so you can actually choose the specific breaker that you're using. That way you can be certain that you've got the right one because sometimes they do subtly change. So you want to make sure that, again, you're choosing the breaker that exists, but know that sometimes it doesn't actually matter all that much. Trip curves are really used for two different parts of your engineering design, for selective coordination and for arc flash. For arc flash, it's used to figure out the trip time. It's interesting that these curves actually only end up mattering for a very, very tiny set of currents. For commercial buildings, you usually assume that the max time for an arc flash is going to be two seconds. The assumption is that the person is going to get out of the way after that amount of time. 
or that the equipment is melted and it probably isn't arcing anymore. For small currents, most of those are going to have a trip time assumed of two seconds for your arc flash calculations because they're in the part of the curve where it's above two seconds and it doesn't matter. Then you'll have this small range of currents where the trip time is going to vary and then pretty quickly you get to the instantaneous section where anything above this current trips immediately. So taking a look at a couple curves here, it's really only this very small set of currents where the time current curve is going to matter for an arc flash calculation. When you are in that section, we'll use that appropriate trip time. But in most cases, you're either going to be at two second trip time or an instantaneous trip time for your arc flash. To wrap up, again, there are three types of curves. There's the thermal, there's the electronic, and there's the fuse curves. When you're using these curves, realize that they're being digitized from PDFs. So you don't want to assume more precision on the curve than actually exists. You don't want to substitute curves because they're all a little bit different. For electronic curves in particular, you want to have some idea of how they actually work in the field when setting the values for them. And for arc flash, it ends up being a very small range of currents where these curves actually come into play.